Hello and welcome gamers to yet another episode of Gameplay, the esports show that keeps you in the know of all things high school and university esports. I'm your host, Collins Manyame, aka Scarra in the esports streets, and today we're going to be talking about some developments within the high school space, but alongside that, we also have yet another special guest. So stick around because this one is the one you do not want to miss. So moving into our catch-up, some time back, Kiro Schools hosted the Kiro Esports in Daba at Poch. Alongside that, they were talking more about esports, about the space, also educating teachers as well as coaches in attendance about how to sustainably grow within the space and giving them workshop tools and advice on how to grow their schools and their teams. Let's take a look. We're at the eSports in Darba that's situated in Poch today to basically coach the coaches and to reignite that passion and to show them what eSports can be. It's very exciting to me to see so many people that came through and wanted to learn about gaming. It's great to see a variety of complete newbies to professionals that clearly are gaming in their spare time at home. Uh, what's also really great is having ACGL here, which is obviously a fantastic brand to have as a backbone, making sure that everything is set up just right and have the top-notch availability of eSports equipment from Acer and Predator. From last year, which was our first in Darba, we only had about 50 coaches participate, where this year that number has doubled. And we've also seen the coaches adopting esports and all the strategy a lot more, and they are hungry for more information, and I think that's the reason why we've seen a doubling in numbers. This in Dorba this year, I've definitely learned so much from everybody here. It's really amazing opportunity for coaches, teachers, anybody that's interested in e-sport. No matter what your level of expertise are, there's a noob line, if you want to call it that, and there's your intermediate one, and there's your pro one. So it's definitely something for everybody. We started out our journey with uh, Kuro two years ago launching and supporting the eSports program where we had to work with them and advise them and provide them with support. They're now standing on their own two feet in a very, very strong way and it was an absolute honor to have gone through that. I love the Indaba. I think the Indaba is just an, there's an energy about this Indaba and, and I think it comes from the Kuro staff generally, uh, from the organizers to the attending teachers, but there's such a powerful energy here that I don't get from other events around the world, even the massive events like ISTE and BET in London and so on. There's something about this in Daba that is truly unique in its creative energy and I just, I love that. I thrive here on that. Truly an amazing initiative from Kuro Schools. And Kuro, a team that has been involved in the high school space for quite some time now, constantly giving and investing within the space. And they continue to do it more and more. But moving on from that, this past week, we had an interview and catch up with Matthew Chetty, teacher and coach from Milnerton Primary School. Here are his thoughts on why his team got into esports and chatting on the challenges that they've experienced thus far. Let's have a watch. Welcome to Mulleton Primary School. Our actual esports team only started up uh, being of this year. So firstly, we thought it was a cool idea with the Comic-Con thing, but 
upon investigating kids who can maybe play and trying to find out who can join our team, we realized that there's a big demographic of kids who don't participate in after school events like culture or sports, and this was their in to meet new people, make new friends, that whole vibe. So for us, it was like using gaming to bring the kids together was like a really cool thing for us. I, I really enjoy being a part of this team. This is my team, my home. Um, but we have some great competition out there, which really spurs on the, the competitive nature in our kids. It was such a great experience to be the esports coach that I wish I had when I was a kid at school, when I was playing games. So it was scary, it was daunting, but it was very life-giving, very fulfilling. I think it was a moment where we had a grade seven, a grade four, and a grade five playing together and just watching their teamwork, watching them come together. And we had some parents watching the match as well and they were screaming for their children and just that unity amongst kids of different ages just playing a game together was just so heartwarming. I think trying to uh, organize matches with other coaches who have other responsibilities, with kids who have things pulling them left and right, trying to make a commitment. I think the actual matchmaking process has been a little bit challenging, but not impossible. Um, but yeah, I think that would be the, the biggest challenge for me. I think, I think if handled wrong, yes, but the way we are handling it, and I know my sister schools are handling it is really well, where it is more of a privilege. So if your marks are dropping, you're not focusing on your school, you're out of my team. So in that, I think it actually promotes positive um, work, work ethic, as well as when the kid knows they have esports practice after school, they're in a good buzz, you know, they're ready for the day to just come and pass. I, th I think it does promote a healthy work ethic. I've definitely seen social interactions with kids who would just do school and go home, who weren't involved anywhere else, and even some of the more recluse quiet kids who would rather spend their evenings grinding games can now grind with someone. And seeing teamwork and acceptance amongst young grades with all the grades, and that whole dynamic shift of just friendships being formed around the laptop playing some games, it's been great. Uh, I see us hopefully in the future being top of the log in some games. I see. I see a lot of victories in our future, um, and I see us having a thriving, strong esports team uh, that's going to take the country by storm. I believe it. Always beautiful to see primary schools getting involved within the high school space and seeing more and more investment within esports locally. But moving on to that, now it's time for gaming opportunities in your area. So if you've been watching gameplay for quite some time now and keeping up with the ASL, AUL and public esports space, this is now your opportunity. Head on over to the acgl.gg website, get involved, check out all the leagues, competitions and weekly cups that they have in store for you. But alongside that, check out the AGC ACGL Gaming Championship, which boasts a 100,000 prize pool across three different games, such as Fortnite, EAFC 24, and Rocket League. Get yourself in these competitions and don't miss out, because spots are limited. So if you're interested in watching any of the esports action that is to come, make sure you check out youtube.com forward slash supersport schools or you can watch on twitch.tv forward slash african esports or twitch.tv forward slash acgl underscore alpha don't miss out on any of the future events to come Welcome back, ladies and gents. As promised, it's about that time. Introducing my special guest, Sam Tech Go Right. Sam, how are we doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been a long time since I've been in school, so I'm excited <laughs> to, to jump back in there. Fantastic. I mean, it's such a pleasure having you. And just a little intro to who you are. I mean, you're one of the most decorated esports hosts in the country and possibly Africa, providing a voice to the biggest tournaments and events globally. You've appeared multiple times on the international stage for the Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice, Poland, and Cologne, Germany. 
You've worked with some of the biggest tournament organizers and events across the globe as a host, including Blast Premier, Gamers 8, now known as the Esports World Cup, ESL, and so many more. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You make it sound so fancy. I mean, I just talk about games, right? That's all I really do. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the whole gist of it. You think it's just like talking about games and stuff, but there's a whole lot more that goes into it. But diving right into things, you know, I want to get to know what actually got you into the field of hosting. You know, was it a calling that you like pounced on maybe in esports or outside of it? What is the story behind that? So I was always into games, uh, and when I was in high school, uh, I'm going to give away my age a little bit, but it wasn't cool. Like, we didn't have esports leagues. Like, you just, if you played games, you were a super nerd, so you sat in the corner. So I always kept it very quiet, uh, and I never really spoke about the fact that I was into it. My brother was playing competitively. All his friends were always at our house, uh, and I just got super into them competing. I was always going to watch them. I was never good enough uh, <laughs> to, to play. They would always kick me off the PCs, yeah. but I started watching them. I was going to all of their events. And I just got really frustrated because at that time, there wasn't these cool shows like this. There was no real like spotlight on competitive gamers. And I was yeah. like, I don't care. I'm going to do this, you know? So I started writing on a blog uh, and then I picked up a really cheap phone and started making very bad YouTube videos. Uh. Just trying to tell those esports stories and just share that passion. There was never a, this is a job. This is something I'm going to do. I'm going to travel the world. Never thought of that. Just wanted to share these stories of these competitive gamers. And then I just got spotted by someone and they said, hey, you could make a job out of this. I laughed at them. But then down the line, suddenly they, they were paying me and they were putting me on planes and flying me around the world. And then suddenly I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is now what I do for a living. But I think it was always from a passion of just being really passionate about esports and wanting to tell these incredible stories of our South African gamers. I think that's such a beautiful thing to note because it's not some, I think that's a lot of, the sort of difference when it comes to esports is that you don't really expect that it's actually going to be a career. You didn't think in your wildest dreams that just talking about gaming, just talking about esports will have you jet setting. And I think that's the beautiful thing about esports is that there's just so much that you can find within it that you'd never expect. I mean, no one would have thought, oh, casting can get me flying to Germany. Hosting can get me in Dallas, can get me in, in Tokyo, Japan. You know, there's just so much that comes from it. And... It's just that passion, right? It's that burning passion that was in you that sort of sparked all of that. For sure. And I always try to say to people, because I, I get a lot of like moms who come to me and be like, how does my kids, you know, get into esports? And or I'll have kids come and ask me. And I always say, like, if you're not passionate about this, it's mm. not gonna happen. Because yeah. I didn't for a very long time, it's cool now. Like I do get to fly all over the world and it's great. But for a long time that wasn't the case. I wasn't getting flights, I wasn't being paid. This was something I did in my spare time while I was studying, while I was working. To, because it was a passion that I wanted to share. And I think that that's the most important thing is at the end of the day, playing games is fun. And this is something that we love to do. So you need to do it for the love of it first and foremost. I also hate that because I know like lots of people say that, like founders and like big names. And they're like, just do it for the passion. You still have to eat. Yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> there needs to be a little bit of passion there. Yeah, the, I think that's the importance and what is sometimes lost, not even just in esports, but a lot of things is you need to love what you do. You need to have a passion for it because you can't really succeed at something you don't enjoy. And that's kind of a testament for a lot of people and their success that's kind of followed. And that's a testament to you as well with just how much work you've put in. But you were touching on a lot of this sort of stemmed from when you were in school, kids have come up to you. But I think that segues now into my next question. What is the importance of introducing esports and educating you know, these kids, teachers, um, parents at a young age or at these grassroots levels? And what is the importance of trying to grow esports in high school and university levels? So for me, I think the first thing is that the stereotype of like that gamers are these like really unhealthy nerds sitting in the corner is so false. I think competitive gaming, no matter what game it is, whether it's like a Rocket League or a Valorant or a FIFA, you are so focused, you have to be mentally supercharged, super focused. Mm. There's a lot of analysis work that goes into it. There's fine motor skills. So I think that there is so much benefit to someone competing in esports from a young age much like there's a benefit to playing rugby. Obviously, there's a physical yeah. benefit to rugby. I think with esports, there's other benefits as well that you need to look into. There's teamwork, there's communication, and there's obviously just, like I said, there's a mental stimulus that happens there as well. So I think encouraging that from a young age is really important because if you look past the fun, because it is fun, we're playing a, an esport for once of a better time, you're playing games with your friends, there's also a lot of benefits as a young person teaching you teamwork, communication, and putting you in a competitive environment to help those skills develop, I think, is, is really exciting. 
Plus, not all of us are good at rugby. I couldn't catch a ball. So, like, I think that this is just another opportunity and a, a fun extracurricular activity that, that children, children and, and teenagers can explore, you know? Yeah, and you actually touched on something important there is there's so much more to gaming than just the stereotypical, oh, we just play games, right? There's so much more. There's even, I mean, therapists as well for some of the biggest esports teams because of just how hectic um, competitive gaming can be, right? So it's about educating them on these stuff and letting people know more and more about what is actually involved within the space. Because I feel like a lot of people, when they see gaming, it's instantly, oh, you're just you're sitting in front of a PC, sitting in front of a screen, you, you game. But there's just so much more that happens behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see. And I think that's what can also be taught. And that's what can be introduced more and allowing more and more parents, students to understand just pros and cons of what it is to be a part of the space. For sure. And I think what I've been really lucky is, is that I've got to see the best gamers in the world. So we see all the news titles of these players that are making millions of dollars. I've met them. Like some of them I call my friends. They are making millions of dollars. But if you look into how their life is, I think it's really good for parents and for, for students to see this is that they work, they wake up in the morning early, they don't sleep in until 12. They're very fit because to sit and play a three, four hour competitive match on a PC, you actually have to be physically fit. It's very draining. So they do a lot of fitness work. They're very strict about what they eat. They're very conscious about what they're putting in their bodies because they realize they need that fitness and that stimulus. But also they don't just play games for eight hours. There's a lot of analysis work. They work with specialist analysts, much like you see in football or rugby who break down opposition, break down certain plays, discuss the best way to play the game. They have team meetings where they work on their communication because you're in a very high stress situation. You're talking to each other. You have to make calls really quickly. They have to be able to read the game, talk to their teammates, listen to their teammates, play at the same time. Mm. There are so many things that go into being a professional esports player. And those skills, I think if you start them young in high school leagues, are fantastic. It's, it's such a great skill to learn whether you're playing esports and professional sport or if you just want to work in an office with other people. I think those are skills that are really important. So I always get excited when I see esports leagues in high schools uh, and, and even universities because it's a way to, to educate so many people while they're having fun. That's the most important bit because that's when you learn the most is when you're having a good time and having fun. Most definitely indeed. And it's great to see this happening. It's great to see these leagues start to form, a lot of these workshops as well getting developed because it starts to teach people how to sustainably grow within the space and how to slowly but surely work their way up. Because I think also something, sometimes the thing that's lost is people will see, oh, this player earned this amount of money, this player earned that amount of money, but it doesn't really tell the story of what it takes to actually get there or what are the actual challenges, especially locally. And that's why I feel it can be important as well to let people know about these things, just what you are getting yourself into, especially in the local esports industry. A hundred percent. And I think that obviously we hear the big money, but much like anything else, it's really important to understand that there's a one percent of like the whole world that's at the top doing that. So the money, I, a lot of parents always say to me, I want my kids to play games because they'll make lots mm. of money. Ah, it doesn't matter how good they are, they might not. I think that you need to look at the other benefits to it uh, and a fun, and it's more fun community building exercise with lots of skills that you can learn. But what's also great is you don't have to be the best player. I'm the perfect example. I'm absolutely terrible. I have terrible aim, but I found something that, that I could do. And maybe you don't want to be the, the player, maybe you don't want to be the person who's talking because you're a little bit shy, but there's so many things. You can work behind the camera if you want to make these shows. You can become an analyst. You can become uh, a psychologist who's helping these players. There's so many jobs that are now developing around esports as an industry that starting in high school and learning about that is such a great opportunity. My job didn't exist when I was studying. Now it's a job. And there's people that, are, that, that can honestly say when they're 15, 16, that's what I want to do for a living. That excites me, and I think that there's a lot of space to grow, whether you want to be an accountant and, and help with the, the financial side of it, or if you want to be the professional player, there's so many opportunities now in the space. That's beautiful, and it's a perfect segue into my next question because I'm one of the people who were fortunate enough to come into the space where hosting, shoutcasting, analyst work, all are jobs now, not only locally, but internationally as well. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do that as a passion, uh, passion project for myself. But I want to ask, what is it that you'd 
sort of advise people? Because you've been on the international stage, you've done it multiple times. What would you say to students who potentially look up to your work and potentially want to get into the space of hosting or get to a place where you are now or work their way towards that? So the first thing is you have to have a passion. I know we said that, but if you don't love the game, it's pretty hard to, to commentate it. These, some of our, like, I'm into Counter-Strike. Some Counter-Strike games go on for four hours. If you don't love it, you've got to sit and watch it for four hours. So be passionate about the game and, and understand that you're a storyteller. So I think a lot of people see what I do and presume it's a little bit like streaming where they're going to be famous, and that's, what that's not how it works. Your job is to make these players famous. So you have to have mm -hmm. a love for the esports, a passion. And then my advice is just start. Like I mentioned earlier, I picked up a really bad smartphone at the time and just made really cringy YouTube videos of me hosting. And then I watched as much as I could. I watched so many different esports, so many different people watching, seeing the little things that they do. There's so much uh, available on YouTube for you to access and watch. Just watch as much as you can. Consume, 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 and create and create and create. And slowly but surely, you'll see, mm. you'll start to improve. Ask people for advice. Ask your friends if you can commentate their games. And then ask your friends for feedback. And sometimes they'll be a little bit rough and it'll, they'll be a bit mean, but that's the only way you can grow. And I think yeah. my advice is always just start creating. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it's on a bad phone. You've just got to start commentating and hosting and putting it out there. And then once you've got some of it out there, then start reaching out to the local tournament organizers. Reach out to your local, you know, your, if one of your high schools has an esports team and say, hey, can I come and, and do some like cool sideline interviews? Can I maybe commentate your games? Just ask. I think 90% of the people you ask will say, of course you can, because everyone wants that, that yeah. extra bit. And that's all you have to do. Yeah. And it's all about just starting because you just need to get your foot in the door and then you start working your way up. It sometimes is an idea in people's heads that you have to have this equipment, you have to be here, there, you have to have this amount. There, it's just all about getting yourself started and finding your footing on your first sort of tournament or maybe your first sort of event. And it's not only about maybe having that, that figure at the back of your head. It's, it's the passion, right? It's, it's the passion that keeps you going. It's definitely the passion. And, you, and like obviously the fancy gear makes you sound better, makes you look better, and in time that comes. But in the beginning, I sucked. Like I look back and I sucked. So it didn't matter that it was on a grainy camera with bad sound, because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I sucked. I needed to learn. Like It's OK for you to suck in the beginning. And it's OK for you to, I, people used to joke and call me cringe girl when I started, because it was cringy. You've got to lean into that. So I think instead of wondering about how am I going to get paid, how am I going to make all this money, how am I going to fly around the world, just be like, I just want to make cool stuff. Yeah. And work with what you have. Don't ever let the fact that you don't have a fancy mic and a fancy camera be the thing that sets you back. Use your phone. There's so many cool apps now on your phone that will allow you to record and voice over. Uh, you can do it on TikTok. You don't even have to go on YouTube. TikTok's got a great esports community that you can jump on. And they've got all the tools in the app that you can create what you want. So just start creating. And then as time goes, obviously, you can get all the, the broadcast gear that you need. But I think in the beginning, it's just about finding your comfortable space. And once you're comfortable reaching out to, to for example, the, the, this is such a perfect opportunity with the schools leagues, is reaching out being like, hey, can I commentate? I don't think anyone's going to say no. They're going to invite you in and off you go. Yeah, there's people already who've even started their ca casting careers with school esports. And that's a testament, once again, to just getting your foot in the door and just putting your name forward. And you said something that it's very interesting, and it's, I think, something that people worry about too much. They called you cringe girl at some point because you were trying. And that's something that people just are afraid to, is just to try. And especially in this space where you sometimes will look cringe, you sometimes will get embarrassed, but you need to be the one to take that initiative, step up and try it, and actually be the one to say, this is what I want to do. And whether you guys roast me for it or not, it doesn't matter. It's what I want to do, it's what I want to try. And that's what's got you to this point, is despite what everyone said to you, you kept it going, you kept pushing forward, and you've got yourself this career that you're now fostering for yourself. For sure, I mean, everyone called me cringe girl, and then I also got told that no South Africans ever work outside of South Africa. When I said, you know, I think when I started doing it, I was like, you know what, I think I, think I want to try. Like, I, I want to be there. They were like, no, nah. a lot of South Africans said to me, no, nah, that's, that's not how this works, you know? Mm. Um, and I think that it's really important sometimes not to listen to that. Saying that, sometimes you also have to listen to some of the negative feedback. They called me cringe girl for a reason, and there was a very, it was very cringy, and I went, okay, why? 
what am I do what am I doing here that's not working for the for, for people why are they not wanting to invest in the stories I'm telling so I think you can learn from criticism but it is tough there the internet is a rough space gaming we've spoken so much about the toxicity that comes with gaming I think it's slowly getting uh, better but it's still there you you do have to have a little bit of a thicker skin which yeah. is tough but with that thicker skin, you will find people who look like you, who sound like you, and who will be able to say, hey, I also went through that, I got you. Uh, and I think that that's the most important, is find that community and just, I hate saying just ignore it, but you do, you have to say, you know what, it's cool. You wait till you see me later. Like that's where we're mm. gonna be. And you just have to push through as tough as it is. Yeah, and it's, it's an industry where, especially as a host, as a shoutcaster, as an Anna, as a personality, you need to have thick skin because there is going to be criticism. There is going to be someone that doesn't like you or doesn't like the work that you do. It's going to be there. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to have that thick skin. You need to be able to push forward through all of that because in as much as, yes, sometimes there is a negative criticism or criticism that is constructive for you to work on and improve yourself. But a lot of stuff may be negative, but you need to be able to push through all of that. And segueing into my final question is, with all of that, with all you know, the nuances and all the pros, the cons, what is one piece of advice that you'd want to give to a student who wants to get into hosting and you tell them this piece of advice, especially if they want to sustain this as a career for themselves? Find your voice. So know who you are and what you, what you want to be and then just go with that no matter what. Don't listen to everyone else telling you what a host is supposed to look like or supposed to sound like. If I had done that, and again, I'm giving more my age. When I started, there were no women in esports. It was very few. And everyone said, oh, well, women don't do this. Like, mm -hmm. you have to dress this way or look this way. And if I'd listened to all of that, I wouldn't have continued. So make sure that you know what you want to sound like, what you love, what you feel your, your truth is and what you want to say, and just go with that. And don't, there's going to be so many people who are going to say you can't do this because of the color of your skin or your gender or the fact that in South Africa, esports isn't big enough. You're going to hear all of that. You just, if this is what you really want to do, you just have to keep pushing uh, and find people. Uh, I was lucky I had phenomenal mentors, but find people who you want to aspire to be and you can reach out to them and they're really friendly. Like I said, I had these incredible mentors who ended up, they're now my friends uh, because I went to them and I said, help me, what, what do I need to do? So do that and build that community, build it in your school. You know, speak to your other mm. friends and build that community in your school. Cause that's what this is about. We play games cause it's a community. Yeah. And, Outside of the competitive stuff, this is what we do and what we love, and we have this community of people who share that passion. Just share that passion with your friends and keep going. Yeah. I mean, th there's not much I really can add to that, but I think the one thing I can add is, especially where you're saying, stay true to your voice, finding your voice. I think that's the most important thing, is when you are true to yourself and sticking to a personality that is you, right? When you are someone that is not a personality that's created by other people or told to how you must be, but rather it's something that has come within you. I think that's where you actually start to not only feel your passion for your work, but also you start to produce the results as well. 100%. And obviously in game, we get to be whatever we want to be. That's the best part about gaming, right? You can create the most insane characters. Just live that character in real life. That's kind of what I get to do in my job, and I want other people to do the same. Beautiful. There's no other better way to end it off. Thank you so much, Sam. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much. Let's go play some games now. Most definitely indeed. Nothing more needs to be said. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. That has been Gameplay. Join us next week once again where I do have yet another special, special guest. So I hope to see you then. Same time, same place. I've been your host, Skara, and this has been Gameplay Episode 3. Take care, gamers.